Does that make sense? Let me say it this way. Yes. So in six years, you're going to touch that road regardless uh, okay. if it's a cold mixed road or super seal. Correct. Is it going to be the same but cost? But in the meantime, if something goes wrong, we will go out and fix it. Right. But but the, but the cold mixed roads have, have typically lasted, you said, five to seven. So right. they're not they're not failing and in, in prematurely failing necessarily. No, we but... Might, we might do little repairs if we need to. But would it do on a super seal or a cold mix? It, it, we have to do repairs on both types of roads regardless. Correct. My point is, at the six-year mark, when we got to do a little overlay... We're going to do that overlay, whether it's a cold mix or a super seal or a wet base or a dry right. base. If you put a matter. Nova chip on it, it's a half inch Nova chip road. Whether it's cold mix or or hot mix, you're going to put the same Nova chip on it or whatever so treatment guess, you you pick. So my point is, if you were to look at say a 50 year cost of that road, it's going to be cheaper to do the wet base. I'm sorry, they do the the dry base because it's forty thousand dollars cheaper per mile to begin with, and it'll. And down the road, our, our, our activities on that road at that point going forward are almost identical, basically. Right, unless something happens to the road, unless like a, a failure of some sort. A failure of some sort. Well, we have like no that, data that we know, have to go out and patch it. We have no data to know that a, a, a dry base or a wet base is going to fail more regularly than the other type. We don't know that. No, it just depends on how, how well you construct it in the first place. We're losing our audience, and I just want to tell them thanks for watching. And uh, you're going to have to go online in order to pick up the rest of Mr. Spears' comments. So. Well, I'm sure they already fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's watching now. All right, well, I, I appreciate that answer. I, you, know, you know, again, you did say yesterday that uh, the independent uh, third-party uh, opinion of this is that the dry base is, in fact, uh, a quality road, and, and their and their opinion was as good as the the wet base. There's and on the dry base, there's at least several there's contractors that can provide that. So there's competition built in. There's many contractors that provide it that have made their living for years doing it. And I think if we commit to a wet base only, the solar solar seal, we're really held hostage with whatever they want to charge because, and they have been. They've they've increased the price because there is no competition on that on that product. So I like the dry base because again, we we have experience in the past, maybe a long time ago, but it was a good road. Third party says it's good. Um, and, and we have competition built in. And I think to, to arbitrarily spend $40,000 more per mile, to me, is, a, is, not, is not a smart place to go here. We need to... We need to what I, I, what I liked with the competition and the five bids was that uh, Andale's bid came down. The last time we had it was 215, and whatever. What number did you figure out, Commissioner Ranzal? 188. One, it came down from 215 to 188 with the competition. I think that's great. That's tremendous. Well, that's exactly yeah. what we need is competition. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm fine with the recommendation, so I'll, I'll support that. I'll make a motion at some point. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll do that whenever you're ready. Thank you. I'm ready. Look. We'll give, but we'll let you. Okay. He can make a okay. motion and you can make a comment. Yeah. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. We would approve the item number one as recommended by the bid, Board of Bids and Contracts. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Ranza. Well, let me say, I, I, I would disagree with Commissioner I don't think this is an arbitrary difference of $40,000. Uh, I've been led to believe over time that the difference is the one that, I mean, one is better than the other. At least I've been convinced by uh, uh, public works director that one's better than the other. So, yeah, you're paying a little bit more for it, but it's better. So I think you're getting a better product, which I think is a better long term uh, for us. Um, but I'd be willing to, uh, you know, do a compromise, and I'll I'll take the wet on mine, and you guys can have your drive if you want. But uh, you can't do that. But anyway, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, why? I don't know why we would settle for a, a product that's not quite as good. So I think I, I, it's kind of a gamble. But I'm going to trust the judgment of my public works director, who has told me repeatedly this is a better product. So anticipating that, we've talked to legal, and <laughs> you can't accept two bids off the thing. I, I, you, I, I you know that, right? Were you I, just kidding? I, 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 okay. I, I, I knew that. Thank you, Commissioner Howe. Well, just to be just to be clear, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, you know, I do want the best roads in my district as well. I think we all want that for our district. So we want we want that for all of Sedgwick County roads, even if it's not my district. We want the best roads possible. We got to be careful with, with taxpayer money, of course. And I, I guess the data in front of me says that these roads are equivalent. I don't have any data other than subjective opinion based on past discussions. But what's in front of me right now says these roads are equivalent. And one's forty thousand dollars cheaper. And the bid board did their due diligence. I, I don't have. Uh, an opinion that's going to go against the data that's in front of me as well as the process we followed to get to this point. So I appreciate the comment that we want the best roads, and I agree, we do want the best roads, but that comes with a cost, and there's no data to, to say it's actually better. That's just a subjective opinion at this moment. We don't have any data to say that. So uh, anyway, I'm ready to vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Spears, for being here with us today. And you get my lunch because you talk longer. No. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. <laughs> anyway, I, I appreciate the information. I am not an engineer. I rely on our professional engineers for advice. Our professional engineers have come back and given us a, a recommendation. Uh, I am also a fairly conservative Republican who likes to save money. Uh, so I'm going to support the motion. With that, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner O'Donnell? Commissioner Ranza? No. Commissioner Howe? Aye. Commissioner Unruh? Aye. Commissioner, or Chairman Dennis? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Spears. Thank you. Well, welcome back, uh, Mr. Thomas. Yes, sir. You're not going to get off this one easy, uh, either. I'm here for the long run. <laughs> We're ready to hear about uh, recommendations. Yes, we made the recommendation. We made the recommendation on item two, the actuarial and broker review services, and I believe there was going to be some discussion about that as a separate item. Would you like me to read the recommendation again, sir? Uh, we know what the recommendation is for IMA. Yes, sir. I think there's going to be some questions about okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Ranzo, do you want to ask questions? Or you want to <laughs> Go ahead. Well, thank you. I think probably Eileen needs to come up. And I'm sure you already know what my questions are, but uh, uh, we have a bid from IMA uh, that is $10,000 more than the bid for Gallagher, uh, but there is 1% difference in those two bids. Uh, in your professional opinion, is 1% difference uh, worth $10,000 for our taxpayers? I just, uh, Joe was providing me a clarification. It's a one point difference between the two bids as but opposed if you to 1%. Divide it out, it's 1%. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, in my professional opinion, based on the information that we received in the RFP and the follow up questions that we asked on the best and final offers, IMA is providing a very well rounded, full bodied um, recommendation with an 11 step process on how they will manage the helping us with the actuarial review and the RFP process for both medical and all the aspects of the RFP that we will be putting out for our 2020 uh, health insurance provider. Hey, let me ask you another question. If it was 2% difference in $20,000, would it be a better deal to go with uh, Gallagher or IMA? I wouldn't be able to give you that answer because uh, that would just be purely speculative. So if it was a 3% difference, we could go $30,000. If based on your $10,000 and 1%, I'm trying to find out where the break point is. Uh, um, the committee, and when, when the RFP committee reviewed this, and we talked about it. Everyone gave their evaluations, their determinations, and their you know, the committee together made a recommendation based on the information that we had. And it wasn't based solely on price. Uh, Joe can explain how price is incorporated into the calculation, but it was the entire package. And Gallagher got the full credit for the fact that they had the lowest price but they did not have the best proposal. Um, let me take a look at a couple things here. On, and I do not want to know who the evaluators are, uh, but uh, one evaluator rated uh, overall, um, I think it was B, Yeah, B was 75% for Gallagher, and uh, it was 90% uh, for IMA. Yes, sir. Uh, that alone is enough to sway six points, which would have been, been the difference. Um, there's, they're, they're so close between the two of them. Uh, and I don't know where the break point should be. That's what I'm trying to find out, is where this break point should be. Is it 1%? Is it a half a percent? Uh, where is it worth $10,000 more to our taxpayers? Uh, and uh, I know that you had uh, six people look at this, and I respect uh, what they did. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but then when it comes down to a decision point, I need to know where our break point is. What, what are we going to accept for a difference? And truly, 1% difference is what the total difference is between these two uh, evaluations. Is it truly worth $10,000? And I understand that quandary that you presented, sir. Um, when we look at the, the scoring on the um, item E, which is the price cost competitiveness, it, we, we quantify that directly mathematically. And so that's why you see the difference between Gallagher um, getting the full amount, which was 20 points, because they did have the best price, and then you have IMA with 15. So, of course, that brings that, that part of it down five points on the average. But then the rest of it is done qualitatively based on the point system. And so because of the, you have a total of 30 data points, and this represents the 20% uh, 20, 20 of the 30, that's why the overall score could be changed based on those other data points. Does that the make problem is one score, for example, if you look at Gallagher on B, uh, the evaluator B, got 75% total, and Evaluator B gave 90% total for IMA. Uh, that 75% is truly an outlier because if you look all the way across Gallagher, they got 95, then dropped down to 75, 95, 98, 80, and 100. Yes. That 75 is an outlier. And that's. And that 75 drove the entire uh, evaluation. What we do, sir, I'm glad you brought that point out about the outliers. When we write, write down all the scores, and we have outliers, we have a group discussion as to why there are outliers. There could be two things that may happen. One case, you may have one person who missed something that the rest of the committee saw or read, and so they are allowed to say, oh, is, I may need to change my score. Conversely, you may have one person who caught what the other four or five missed. And so that's why we have the discussions for the outliers, because that allows us to adjust the scores at that time. When we discuss this, there was a consensus among the group, but no changing in the points for the individual scores. So that we're allowed to do that. They are allowed personally. We don't try to coerce them in any way to change their score, but they're allowed to do that based on the group discussion, and no one changed their scores. hope that answers that part. We well, have a number of other commissioners yeah. got questions, so I'll let them start asking. Uh, Commissioner Howell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you hit most of the points I wanted to bring up, but again, just so everyone understands, it's a 25% difference in cost. It's a 1% difference in the in the scoring of these companies by six different people. It was added up and divided out, and so the, the scoring of that was a 1% difference between Gallagher and IMA. But it's a 20 it's a 25% cost difference. So again, when your earlier comments, Mr. Chairman, it sounded like the cost difference was 1%. I want to make sure everyone understands it's a 25% difference in cost. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Ranza. Well, I, I just want to say I, I have some of the same concerns as the chairman. Um, Tim? I mean, Ga Gallagher's highest ratings were the highest of any of the others. I mean, they were they were high. So you got a hundred, you got a ninety-eight, a ninety-five, ninety-five. Now some of the lowers were lower. It, it just, I it's just some interesting results. But and then I agree, it's a twenty-five percent cost difference. I get it. I, I, I'm, I guess I'm not convinced that one. You know. This isn't exactly a scientific analysis, but, but you know, you try to put numbers on, on people's opinions, and that's fine. And we had, you know, two of them that were at 90.5, 91.5, and others that went all the way at 85, 79, 85, 84. I think that clearly shows here that it's not exactly a precise thing, but it says that Gallagher and IMA both rose to the top. They were very, very close. They separated themselves. And so then it's hard for me, I mean, I mean, you could make the argument they're essentially the same as far as the outcomes when you compare it to the deviation from all the others. Um, the, the, then the prices becomes, to me, even more prominent, I guess. Commissioners, if I may, Tim Kaufman, um, Public Services. I was a member of the evaluation committee, and I, was, I, was, I think I was one of the disinterested third parties because I don't have a, a dog in this particular fight. But I do have um, a perspective. 
my perspective may be different from the other members of the the committee because they were they all have different perspectives and one of the things that I did as we went through this discussion in part because the the overall total scores are driven in in large part by that pricing factor I went through and I did the old Olympic uh, scoring model where I threw out the high and the low on all of the scores re-averaged them and as we went as I went through that process Again, IMA was the received the highest scores overall. You're absolutely correct. There, this was a close decision between um, IMA and and Gallagher. The collective re impression of the group was that the overall pr response that was provided, including the scoring, the the pricing factor, was that we received a better response from IMA than we did from Gallagher. Again, they're very close in in. Uh, score and there's a, a difference in price but we were look we didn't do a request for bid we did a request for proposal and that's why we had that five factors um, that score to score on and as we went through the scoring process again the 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 scores overall are closer in part because of the weight that was given the pricing factor so if we I and I haven't done this math but I think if you throw the pricing factor out and rescored everything Again, IMA would have a higher score, and it would be a more, uh, it would be a greater difference in score than that one point that you see when you factor in the price as well as everything else. If that helps, and if I confuse things worse, I apologize. At this point in the day, it's very easy. To <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Unruh. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I appreciate that you went through the exercise to throw out the high and low scores, and in my looking at that scoring, I try to eliminate just a price factor and see what they do on basis of performance rather than just on the basis of price. And uh, IMA comes out ahead when you just take those factors. Um, I, I trust the process. I think it was well thought out. I trust the folks who scored it. And um, there, to, to me, this, um, uh, this discrepancy that uh, we're discussing right now doesn't rise to the point where I would want to uh, make a decision other than what's been recommended to us. So I'm going to support the recommendation of the Board of Bishop Contracts. Uh, and, and part of that is based on the fact, and I know we used this company before uh, when we went through the process of trying to evaluate health care insurers, and uh, I believe they did a great job and had full confidence of our staff at that time. Um, so clearly a close call. But um, I, I trust the recommendation that came out of this group. So I have to chair. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. Is there, do we have to make a decision today? Pardon? You can do whatever you want, sir. No, is, is there a time front? Uh, well, we we need to, to move forward as, as much as we can. And this RFP went out uh, the end of December. And this is uh, part of the process that we need to do so that we can develop, we can review the plan design we have so that then we can develop the RFP to put it out for the uh, provider that we'll use in 2020. So time is of the essence. It would be nice if you could decide. Next, next meeting? Sure. Commissioner, it can be made. We can put it back on the agenda for next meeting. Sure. Okay. Well, I'd... I don't want to overrule what you all voted on. Uh, I would just like you to go back and look at it from our point of view that is 1% worth 25% increase in cost. That's the only question that we've got. I think all of us are, in, are pretty well uh, united in that. If you come back to us and you tell us that 1% is worth 25% increase in cost, I probably would vote for it next time. But today I'm, I'm just not sure I'm ready. Uh, Commissioner Howell. Thank you. I have a couple quick questions. Is in in the eyes of the uh, director of purchasing, is Gallagher a qualified company? Do they have things we need them to do? Do they present the, the elements we need them to have to do this job? They did. Uh, and, and they were the top two, and that's why it was so close. Okay. So normally when we look at bids, uh, if we select something that's not the lowest bid, usually we've got something tangible as to why we're pit not picking the lowest bid. There's some reason why we do it. This process that was used here was a very subjective, opinionated process. It was, I think it shows in the, in the ratings they gave the various companies. They're so varied, it's hard to make sense of what we're looking at there. So 
if we're not going to pick the lowest bid, I think we need to have a reason why. But something that, a summary as to something that makes IMA better than Gallagher. What, what is that thing that we're, we're picking the more expensive company for? We don't have that. All we've got is a matrix. And right now, I, have, I don't really understand it. it doesn't, no one's articulated a reason why we're going to pick a more expensive bid. And yes, sir. Let me clarify, sir. Uh, this was not a bid. Uh, but it was a proposal, okay. proposal. And, and the reason we just didn't want it would have been unfair to either one it had just been a bid then we would have people who just met the specifications and we just picked a low price when we did it this way we wanted the best quality and so we chose the five criteria um, and I can read the number of points it was a total of 100 points and since in a proposal cost is not the determining factor, that's why you see cost is merely having 20 points of the 100. Okay. So as a proposal, this was done through a very extensive evaluation process and, and scoring. With well, I'm, I think pushing this back is a, sm a smart thing, whether it be a week or two. Um, but in that time frame, I don't know if it's possible to do this, but it would be nice to have someone review how we got to this point or maybe even repeat part of this process to maybe get a... Um, I guess more clarity on why we're picking one company over the other, and and finally, if there's a way to articulate the real differences in these companies as to you know from our perspective as to why we we would want to choose a lot more expensive company, I guess I, I I don't have that data and I need that data to support that. So that's my request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, I'm certainly have never seen the proposals whatsoever, <laughs> so for me to overrule you right now would not be even halfway reasonable. Uh, but to have ask you all to go back and take a look at it again and come back to us and if you come up with the same conclusion again I'm fine with that too uh, but uh, I, I'm not going to vote to say that I would place one above the other without ever even seeing the proposals that uh, would not work so I, I would like to move it back uh, Lindsay did you have something you want to say I'm sorry Sorry, Commissioner. Um, the only thing I was going to say is I was also was on a member of the evaluation committee for this. And when we speak to the $10,000 increase, of course, that's going to be a concern uh, from a finance perspective. For me, though, the larger concern is that we're dealing with a $30 million health insurance budget that this is going to inform um, the, the changes that we make for our employees. Uh, that $30 million that we spend on medical and pharmacy, um, to me, is is the primary focus. Uh, and I was, as a part of the reviewer committee, uh, for me, that comprehensive step-by-step -step process that Eileen referenced, the 11 steps, was uh, persuasive to me as, as being uh, worth some additional cost. So I just wanted to give you that context, but we'll look at it again and come back and say that to you again if that's where we land. Sounds good. I appreciate it, Lindsay. Well, I would entertain a motion to defer this to the next meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on that? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Ranzo? Aye. Commissioner Howe? Aye. Commissioner Unruh? Aye. Chairman Dennis? Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. <clears throat> Thank you. We'll see you again next week. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> you. Mr. Manager, I'm sorry, Ms. Madam Clerk, next item. Consent agenda. Uh, Commissioners, Mike Scholes, County Manager. Uh, before I recommend you approve uh, the consent agenda, um, I bring your attention to item V. And to prevent a coup from happening, <clears throat> we are talking about records in that particular item, which is outlined in the uh -huh. attached PDF. Um, and we like our uh, register of deeds, uh, Tanya Buckingham, and we don't want anything to happen to her. So this is uh, approving the records destruction and not her. So with that, uh, I recommend that consent agenda items Oscar or Oscar through Alpha Hotel. Mr. Chairman, I would move <coughs> that we approve the consent agenda as explained. Oscar through Alpha Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Ms. Buckingham appreciates your clarification. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a motion. He, he made a, a second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none on. Oh, sorry. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Ansa? Aye. Commissioner Howell? Aye. Commissioner Andrew? Aye. Chairman Dennis? Aye. Uh, next item Legislative Issues. Will. Afternoon, uh, Commissioners. Will Deere, Assistant County Counselor. Uh, real briefly, the bills we're concerned about, which is the urban area bill, and then there's two election bills, the election commissioner bill, 
<clears throat> the bill related to the ballots are, are both in, or all three of them are in conference committee. And conference committee should be meeting as we speak and, and for the rest of the week here and next week. And so the way that'll work is those bills will hopefully get wrapped up into a conference report and that'll prevent them from being amended on the floor. And um, pretty good prognosis that all those things will pass. So that's all I've got. When do they go on vacation? Or the first adjournment, I believe, is Friday. Friday. Okay. And so then it, I Very misspoke. Good. They will not be meeting next week, but they potentially will do conference committees in the veto session when they come back. So. Okay. Good. Any questions for Mr. Deer? Seeing none, thank you. Next item, please. Other? Do any of the commissioners have anything for others? Not now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, very briefly, last evening I got to sit on uh, selection board for the Corps of Cadets for JROTC for USD 259, and uh, as we always see, uh, we, uh, they were uh, four outstanding young, uh, they'll be seniors next year, uh, that will be representing the Corps of Cadets, and, and I sincerely enjoyed sitting on that. Uh, also, I want to once again thank uh, Lindsay and her staff and the folks at the VA for all the work that they did uh, on uh, the uh, EMS uh, information that we've been working on. And uh, I don't see anything else that uh, to come before us today. It's been a long meeting. I appreciate everyone sitting through this. And thank you for everything. And we are adjourned. Could have gone on with other <laughs> How about that? Four and a half hours. I <laughs>